Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Rampant Design Tools, and today we're talking about 4K matte transitions inside of Avid Media Composer. Now, in this lesson, we're going to talk about getting the elements into Media Composer, transcoding them properly, because remember, they are 4K elements. Then we're going to talk about how you're going to get in and utilize them in your timeline. And I'm going to show you how you can even customize them so that you can speed them up or slow them down depending on how long or how short you want your transition to be. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Now, before we jump into Media Composer, there is something I want to point out to all of my Mac friends out there. Now, this doesn't necessarily apply to my Windows friends, and you're going to see why in just a second. What I'm going to do is navigate to the folder that I have these 4K matte transitions downloaded into, and you can see I have both volumes in here, volumes 1 and 2. And if you're using a more recent version of the Mac operating system, you'll know that you can select any one of the elements and simply hit spacebar to preview it. Now, you're going to notice that it doesn't quite look correct when we preview it. You're going to see that I don't really have that black and white matte look like we normally do inside of a program like Adobe's After Effects. But what's important to keep in mind is that if I'm using the spacebar to preview method to preview these clips, Believe it or not, QuickTime is actually previewing this element to me with the alpha channel intact. Now you'll see that if I right click and simply say open with QuickTime player, what I'm going to do is just view this at half size just so that I can actually see it inside the frame. And you'll see now that we've got the true black and white matte look. So just keep that in mind if you happen to be using the spacebar to preview method and you don't think things look quite right. If you open it in QuickTime 7, much like all of my Windows friends already have access to, you'll actually get a more proper visual representation of exactly what these elements look like. Okay, so let's now get into Media Composer and let's get these elements into our project. Okay, now before we move on, there is something else that's important that I should mention, and that is that I'm working in version 8.3.1 of Avid Media Composer. Now, why is that important to this tutorial? Well, it's important to keep in mind is that these are 4K matte transitions, meaning obviously a larger than HD project. Now, if you happen to be working in pre-version 8.3.1, that's not really going to be relevant because what's going to happen is when you AMA link to these elements and you transcode them, they'll be transcoded to the size of the current project that you happen to be working on, whether it's you know 1080i or 720p. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about SD because most of the time these days we are working in HD projects. But like I said, because I'm working in version 8.3.1, we know that in version 8, larger than HD projects were supported. And so what I'm going to do in this tutorial is I'm going to show you the workflow for transcoding these elements in a larger than HD resolution. Okay, now let's move on and let's get this footage into Media Composer. What I'm going to do, simply create a new bin. We'll just call this AMA Link to Media. Now you'll also remember that when we first looked at this footage, uh, outside of Media Composer that it had an alpha channel with it. And what's going to happen is when I right click and I say AMA link to, you'll see that I'm already in the folder that has the 4K matte transitions. I'm not going to select them all because we have, a, you know, over 150 elements here. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to select, you know, the first, you know, eight transitions or so. And I'm just simply going to say open. Of course, in a few seconds, those elements are going to be brought in and you're going to see that we've already run into our first stumbling block, which is that the elements have been brought in with that alpha channel, which we really don't want. Now, why would they you know, have an alpha channel with them? Well, what's important to keep in mind is that if you use them in an application like Adobe's After Effects, you can tell After Effects to use that alpha information to do the transition. We don't have that luxury in Media Composer, so this is not the workflow that we want to use. What I'm going to do is just simply select those clips. I'm just going to delete them. Remember, they're just AMA link to clips, so we're just deleting the link to them. And what we're going to do is we're going to head up to the settings. We're going to come to AMA and right over here in the link options, you're going to see right down here that the alpha channel was set to be invert white equals opaque. What we want to do is just simply set that to ignore. Now when I go back and I say AMA link and I just select, you know, however many of those elements again and I simply say open, they're now going to be brought in just as regular standard clips, just like such. There we go. Now something else is going on here that's important for me to point out, and that is, is that when these clips were brought in, they were brought in in the wrong color space. Can you see that? You can sort of see that we have a gray, uh, not really a sort of a black, we have a little bit of a gray color here to our clip. Now the reason that this is important is that if I was to transcode this media like such, what's going to happen is, is that right as it gets to the transition in your timeline, 
all of a sudden everything's going to seem to get a slightly brighter and then it's going to do the transition which is not what we want we want to make sure that our blacks are actually as black as they should be now what most people think is that you're going to have to get in and you're going to have to set your source settings clip by clip but you actually don't have to do that all i'm going to do is simply select all of the clips I'm going to right click and I'm going to come down to my source settings. All I'm going to do is simply come up to the levels scaling full range to video levels. I'm going to delete that and then I'm simply going to say apply to all. Now as soon as I do, if you watch in the preview window here, that gray color is going to turn to be the proper black color. All I'm going to do is simply say OK and you'll see now that no matter which element I pick, they're all going to be the proper black color. Very nice. OK, now if I wanted to get in and transcode these clips into whether they're 2K, Ultra HD or 4K, we need to know how big they actually are. So let's get in, let's take a look at the raster size of these clips. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch over to be the clips bin view here. And what we're going to do is we're going to navigate to the fast menu. I'm simply going to come up to choose columns and I want to turn on the frames per second. And let's come all the way down here as well to the raster dimension. I'm simply going to turn both of those options on and you're going to see that we are working in 2398 frames per second, which is perfect because that's what my project currently is. And the raster dimension is set to be 4096 by 2304. So what do we need to do to transcode these into an Ultra HD clip? What we need to do is to simply navigate up to our format tab and let's just say hypothetically we weren't even working in a 4K project, we were working in an Ultra HD project. So all I would do is simply switch my preset over to be Ultra HD 23976. Once I'm there, all I would do is simply select all of my clips. I would right click and I'd come down to consolidate transcode. We'd make sure that we select our transcode option, the drive we want to go to, Right over here we would select the, well we don't need to select the raster dimensions because right now it's set to be the project dimensions, but we could set the target video resolution to be whatever resolution we want. In most cases I would choose standard quality at least. You'll see the AMA source scaling quality set to full, and of course we could get in and we could convert the project frame rate if we want to, but we don't need to because it is 23976 already. And we can even apply the source transformations. Now why would I not want to do that? Well, the whole point of these clips is that in most cases, we're not working in 4K or even Ultra HD projects. We're only working in HD size projects. So if I leave both of these unchecked, I do have the ability to get in and adjust the source settings in an HD project to work with these larger than HD clips. Now, in most cases, color encoding is something that we could actually bake into the clips, but frame flex, we would definitely want to keep adjustable in case we want to get in and adjust any of the size of these transitions after the fact. So all I need to do now is to simply hit transcode, sit back and I can either transcode in the foreground or of course run it in the background and in a few minutes all of my clips will be transcoded as media and ready to work with in any project that I happen to be working in. But of course for the purposes of saving time I've actually already done that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch back. I'm just going to close this bin because I can actually delete the AMA Link 2 Media bin and let's just get rid of that by emptying the trash because what I've done here is, believe it or not, I've already come in and I've already transcoded a whole bunch of clips and I've chosen three of my favorites here that we're going to use for transitions. Now, you'll see that these transitions look very cool. The only problem is, is that in some cases they might be a little bit long. But you know what? nothing to worry about because we can get in and easily adjust the speed of these transitions right from within Media Composer and let me show you how we're going to set this up. So of course the first thing that we do need is a sequence to work with and as luck would have it I already have one. This is some great footage courtesy of EditStock. That's a little bit of a music video. What we want to do is we want to add some of these cool rampant design tools 4K matte transitions in here to create some cool transitions between some of these shots. So let's get in and let's just pick one here. Let's start with this one here. Okay. And like I said, I've already picked out three transitions that I think are very cool. That is a very cool one. And I want to start with this one. Now you're going to see that the transition itself is a second and eight frames long. Now what we want to do is we want to transition out of this shot and into the next shot. 
Now, we're actually going to need three layers of video to do this, of which this transition will go on layer three. So what I normally do to start the whole process is I lay the transition down simply by getting back to the last frame of this clip here and the first frame of the next clip. And what we're going to do is we're just going to edit that clip onto track number three. Now you're going to see the only issue that I have is that this transition pretty much takes up the whole clip, which is not going to help us. What I want to do is at least double the speed of this. Okay, so let's do that first. What we're going to do is I'm simply going to hit Command and 8 on the Mac, Control and 8 on Windows, and I'm going to navigate all the way down to the bottom of the effects palette, right down to the Time Warp section. I'm simply going to navigate to the Time Warp effect. I'm going to drag it and drop it onto my 4K matte transition, and all I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to navigate up to Tools. We're going to come down to the Motion Effects Editor. What I want to see in the Motion Effects Editor is right here, the Speed Graph. All I'm going to do is grab this keyframe and I'm just going to drag it right up somewhere close to about 200. I don't need to be too precise. If I want it to be precise, I can just come in and punch in 200 right here. But now essentially what I've done is doubled the speed of this transition. So instead of it being about, uh, I think we said it was about a second. What do we say it was? We said it was a second and eight frames. You'll see now that this transition literally happens in, oh, about half that time, which is about 20 frames, which is really more reasonable for the purposes of this edit. Now, obviously, if we happen to be working with, you know, an edit that had a lot longer shots, we could even slow the transitions down to really customize them and make them work how we need to have them work. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna remove the rest of this shot now because I really only need it to go right from black to full frame white. Well, let's make sure it goes to full frame white here, just like such, okay? There we go, perfect. Full frame white, we wanna make sure we're on full frame black. Excellent. Now, there is one other thing I need to do to make this shot work the way that we need it to, and that is I need to add a little bit of outgoing tail to this clip. So all I'm gonna do is simply bring it up a layer. We're gonna mark an out point at the very end of this shot, and I'm just gonna make sure that I have V2 selected before I do this. I'm just simply gonna hit the extend key to extend this shot all the way down. Now one thing that I do just to keep my timelines nice and clean is I always like to just add an edit and put this video back on V1. It just helps me stay organized. I like to have all of my edits down on the bottom most video layer. Well now all we need to do is to actually do the transition effect. So let's do that. What we're gonna do is simply navigate up to the key section inside of the effects palette. I'm simply gonna grab the matte key effect and I'm gonna drag it and drop it right down on top of that shot and you're gonna see now what happens is, is that my singer who's doing a little dance there, he dances right into that transition, just like such. Was it really that easy to do? Well, I think it was. Let me show it to you again. Let's just take the dancing again and let's just go right into my guitar player here at the very end. So we're gonna do the exact same thing, except this time I'm just gonna pick a different shot. Let's pick this one here, why not? This is a pretty cool one. Okay, again, this is a, you know, a second of 14 frames, a little bit too long for the purposes of what we're doing. So again, we're just gonna drop that on V3. I'm just gonna edit that in there. You'll see that in a lot of cases, this is gonna become muscle memory faster than you can imagine. All I'm gonna do, time warp, all we're gonna do is come back to the motion effects editor. All we're gonna do, I could even just punch in 200 if I wanted to, make it even a little bit faster if I wanted to. Remember, we need to start on that first frame of black. We need to bring it right down to that frame of white right there. Just gonna lift that up again. All we're gonna do is just extend this shot down just a little bit. Now, of course, before I hit that extend key, I wanna make sure that I do have V2 selected. Let's hit extend. Of course, I'm just gonna clean everything up a little bit here, just like such. Now, I don't even need to go back to the effects palette to get that matte key because of course I have it right here. All I'm gonna do is simply take it right from there, drag and drop, and guess what I have again? I have that very cool transition. Let's make sure that we're looking at V3 here, just like such. Now, as you can see, each one of my shots here has something going on, whether it's a color adapter, whether it's frame flags, whether it's effects. So depending on the speed of your system, you might need to give your shots a quick render here. So what I'm gonna do is just do that. You'll see how fast these render. I haven't sped anything up here, super fast. That is 4K. All I'm gonna do now is just come back, simply hit play. And you're gonna see that we got our cool transition right here, just like that. Very quick, very simple to do. Here comes the second one. Nice, and you'll see, like I said, very quick to drop in there, very quick to apply the effect, and the render itself, if you even need to do it, 
is super quick as well. Okay, now there is one last thing that's important for me to point out. Now, both of the transitions that we just did were outgoing. You'll see, we had our guy dancing here, our singer, and his outgoing tail is what is having the transition applied to it, the same down here. But what if we wanted to change that up a little bit? And what if, let's just say we wanted to apply a transition going into this shot here. So what we want to do is we actually want to take the transition and we want to extend it back. So let me show you. It's no different than what we've done before. Let's just take the transition here again, exactly what we just did, just like such. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply it right here going backwards. Okay. Now again, much like we've done before, we need to apply our transition here. We need to apply our time warp, pardon me, to speed this up. So let's just apply the time warp. Let's come back to our motion effects editor again. Let's just punch in, maybe we'll punch in 225 this time, okay? And of course, we just need to find that last full frame of white, which is right there, okay? And now we just need to bring this back a little bit here, right to about there, perfect. And you'll see now that what happens is, is that we got our little drummer drumming, and the transition is going to start right about there. It's going to go to full frame, and then we're going to go into our singer. Okay, so let's extend the singer back. I'm going to again just raise him up. Of course, we're going to come right back to the start of that transition. Select V2, extend it back. Let's just put it right back down there. Now, of course, you could leave your video wherever you want to. Like I said, I just do this just for the purposes of me staying organized. And you would think that what you're going to do is you're going to take the mat key you're going to drag and drop and everything is going to be as awesome as it was before. But check this out. What's going to happen now is that he's going to start playing the drums and it's going to cut to the singer and then it's going to do the transition. Because what's important to keep in mind is we've actually kind of reversed what we were doing. Like I said, instead of having the transition happen on the outgoing tail, we're now having it happen on the incoming tail going into the shot. So how do we get around the fact that it now cuts to our singer and then does the transition in reverse and then cuts back to him. Well, it's actually very simple. All you need to do now is simply step into the effect, simply invert the key. I'm just going to give this a quick render here again, just so I can play everything back to back. You'll see super fast render. Let's hit play. And here we go. First transition, outgoing, nice. Next transition, incoming, very cool. And then outgoing again. So you see, not only are these transitions very cool and very stylish, they're very simple to get into MIDI Composer, very simple to transcode, and very, very simple to use in your timeline. And the best part is, is that there's zero learning curve, and they're going to look great, and they're going to amaze and wow your clients every time. And don't forget, we have a whole bunch more tutorials, and you can check out our entire product line at rampantdesigntools.com.